Okay, we'll be uh, okay. I'm Srija uh, from Castelli Research Labs, Pune. So uh, we'll be seeing uh, what is real-time scene analysis using Python. So uh, <laughs> this uh, this is a project work, ongoing project work. So you will see you will see a part implementation part of this project over here. So. Um, so we will see the contents such as introduction and the tools and software is used and system implementation and the conclusion. So this is uh, actually, this I think this will be helpful for uh, coders that are new to Python. So what is uh, this real-time scene analysis is an application of computer vision. What is actually a computer vision? I had a query regarding what is computer vision, so I thought to include it. We humans actually perceive the real uh, world in 3D structures, and uh, if we see a flower, like we can uh, analyze the color, the shape, etc., by just seeing it. So that we are able to segment the flower from the background scene. Or if we see a group of people, we are able to count the number of people in a group. So the algorithm that our visual system has been in implemented is such amazing. So and uh, it has uh, the and we have it's a puzzle that has uh, not been solved. So. What the searches in computer vision do is that they try to uh, reconstruct the features uh, by 3D uh, appearance of the object, colors, illumination, etc. And uh, so, computer vision, in short, can be said as describing the real world in images and then reconstructing the same. Okay, so that is computer vision. Now, coming to scene analysis. Okay, scene analysis. It actually uh, is an automated uh, process uh, for uh, managing and analyzing the data without the human intervention, much human in intervention. So scene analysis, basically the recognition of humans and its action has been a topic of research from long before itself. So those, of, those researcher, researchers who are interested in image processing and uh, mathematical back, uh, and those who are coming from the mathematical background will find this interesting. And um, you will see that so much of uh, so few implemented applications uh, in real uh, scene analysis. But the thing is that uh, lack of accuracy of detecting humans or action classification and the complexity to build such systems has been uh, made this project, this kind of project, under research till now. It is a long, very long old project, but it has not come to an end actually. And uh, uh, you can see a lot of papers also be, uh, on human detection, uh, but uh, all those are being done on a set environment, and uh, only very few implementations are there on real time. And at the, it is at this point we try to uh, do a scene analysis in real time using Python. I haven't seen, I haven't come across such a implementation, so we are not sure that we'll be able to see the end of the project, but. This is an initiative worthwhile. So what we have developed till now follows an agile development methodology. We, at any stage of the project, you have you know that there are different stages in a project software development. At any stage, you'll have to go to the previous stage because you are using uh, the real-time data into consideration. So, so we'll go to the tools and software that we had used. Ubuntu, of course, this is the OS, and there are many editors that we have tried out, Genie, PyCharm, and Vim and all. Genie is a uh, fa fast, lightweight editor, so it will be useful for any uh, coder beginner. So, and uh, PyCharm is an advanced IDE. Uh, it, uh, pro it provides options for running and debugging by setting breakpoints, and uh, it can integrate with several version control systems. So for a very big project and all, you can use PyCharm. And Vim is a uh, very powerful editor that uh, anyone can, uh, anyone with uh, good commands, commanding skills can do that. And uh, uh, Python, of course, is the language that we use. And we have come uh, to Python just because it has uh, more scientific computations possible by using the uh, modules, OpenCV, NumPy, Matplotlib, uh, as you have seen uh, before, two days before. And the module, and now we'll come to the module that we have been using. Uh, OpenCV is the first one. OpenCV is open source computer vision library. It contains several hundred computer vision algorithms. 
and uh, it is all built in C++. It has Python binding, so we are be, we are being able to use that in our uh, in Python. And uh, Matplotlib, Matplotlib is the plotting library for arrays, and it is uh, and the philosophy behind Matplotlib is to create simple plots using few commands. Uh, it emulates a Matplot, uh, Matlab uh, graphic commands also. So anyone well versed with Matplot, Matlab can use Matplotlib. And uh, coming to NumPy. NumPy, as you, ha as you heard for the last two days, NumPy is a numerical uh, fundament package for numerical computation. So it, uh, what does it do? It, it's, uh, it, pro uh, it provides an n-dimension array, and it is a uh, fast processing, uh, fast processing uh, ca mathematical calculations are possible on uh, these uh, NumPy arrays. And we have been using uh, the Tikinda for GUI. A graphical user interface. Tikinda comes along, it's a standard library along with Python. And uh, anyone new to GUI development can use Tikinda. And for the later the improvisations, uh, other frameworks are there, PyQt and all are there. And, and the same with IPython. IPython is, uh, 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 it provides a way, uh, um, interactive uh, command shell for uh, running your code. Rather than the old style of commenting, editing, and uh, running the code, you are, uh, IPython provides a way to directly visualize your elements, uh, the uh, values in your code. And this is the uh, part that we have implemented, and this is the workflow that you see. So basically, we have done till human detection. And we, will, and we have the modules that we have used are OpenCV, NumPy, Matplotlib. So uh, any any project development needs a configuration uh, settings initially, and let's set the configuration first, and then we are dealing with real data, real time data. So what we need is that we need a, a camera or a, a bullet camera, the IP camera to stream the live data. This live streaming is possible. Uh, uh, the live streaming after. <coughs> The live streaming video is then converted into NumPy uh, arrays, actually. And uh, that is a feature that uh, OpenCV gives us. And since the OpenCV, uh, OpenCV returns as a NumPy array or object, we are uh, doing the NumPy calculations, actually, on uh, these arrays. And uh, <coughs> once the uh, video is being streamed and converted into image frames, that is a NumPy array object, it is then uh, undergoing a background subtraction. That is a technique, actually. It is a technique to uh, detect the foreground objects from a scene. So if, you, if there is a motion, you can analyze uh, the, uh, the human blob or uh, the blob of that uh, specific event happening. And <coughs> background subtraction is just um, subtracting the current frame from the background frame. So how the this background is not a simple background, but a model background or a trained background. This background is a more trained in such a way that a percentage of the current frame and the percentage of a previous background frame has been added together. So that when you say that you have you are having more percentage of the current frame and a less uh, percentage of the background frame, you say that the background is a background is trained fastly, or uh, if the percentage of the current frame is less in a, uh, by calculating the background, then you say that the training is slow, a bit slow. And then after background subtraction, we go for a thresholding. That is, uh, thresholding means we are selecting only the uh, pixel values that we are in interest. That is the um, picture that you see the downside. It's highlighted, actually. After background subtraction, we will get a uh, grayscale image like that at the upper side. And for uh, clear visibility, we go for the uh, thresholding. That is a binary. Five minutes? Yeah, OK, fine. And then <laughs> after thresholding, we will get the human blobs or whatever, or what are the events that are happening. And then we uh, we are now in a position to detect the uh, events uh, or the changes. And we gather together what, uh, what these events uh, or hum blobs together. This is a blob scene, actually. This is a human blob scene in this down figure. So there will be, this is a case of a single human. Actually, the, 
in a common scene there will be a lot of humans a uh, lot of events happening and we will gather together these events and then we get a frame where actual event is happening and then we uh, used we send this a uh, frame to an hod hod descriptor for human detection hod descriptor is a function provided by open cv itself so you just pass the frame they will give you the coordinates where there is an event and then we are, when we get the coordinates we do a bounding rectangle around the uh, events and then uh, we uh, we plot that and for if there is any change detection we can save also by uh, the saving is done using open cv and oh yeah before that when uh, when we acquire a frame we all do all the numpy calculations using grayscale images and the background training uh, equation is like that <coughs> that is the percentage of the current frame i i i i minus 1 is the current frame actually and alpha is a percentage that you uh, give to the current frame and 1 minus alpha is the uh, percentage that you give assign for the background frame and a new background m i is formed at time i so this is the result that we have obtained uh, a human detection till now yeah uh, and that's it and this is a future scope and means it this application is mainly used in retail analytics and uh, this project will be completed only when a human motion is being classified uh, recognized so the first stage a uh, human detection has been completed till now and uh, we'll move on to 3d tracking of humans later yes and thank you uh um, uh yeah but the, the thresholding uh, since we are doing it in real time we had problems with uh, you know thresholding uh, the we have to see what are the results so yeah by uh, recursive experiment yeah recursive experimenting yeah open cv does has uh, but the but what value of thresholding you have to you know? yeah how did you figure it out yeah by random experience only okay but why why you train you are not uh, trained the thresholding yeah. works yeah it works yeah yeah but the uh, it change it can change with the environment yeah Thank you. 
Picture analysis unit, where there is some kind of an R&D unit with the security establishment, where they will do all kinds of recognition thing, including recognizing the crowd behavior in a fashion which is different from the normal crowd moving. I can see a lot of synergy in what you people are doing with that work. Would your group be interested to contribute? When I have taken out my card, I will give it to her. Please write an email. This could be very usefully critical.